Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Andrew Riggi. I am the Executive Director of the New York City Hospitality Alliance, and I am thrilled to have the folks from the New York City Department of Small Business Services provide a very informative presentation for you today. You know, there's an old saying, you know what you know, you know what you don't know, but you don't know what you don't know. And I know that sometimes people don't know all the various amazing services that the city offers to restaurants and other small businesses uh, to help them navigate the permitting and licensing process, uh, access to all different types of services related to uh, legal, workforce, and a whole list of other um services that can be great for your business. And for those that know, this is a great refresher, and I'm sure they're gonna answer a lot of um, uh, great questions for you and present a lot of material that will help you in your day-to-day uh, -day operations. We were just um, talking before this, uh, before we went live, and it was great news for those that are uh, watching the Olympics. The uh, US gymnastics women's team just took uh, the gold with, uh, the GOAT, Simone Biles, and that's very, very exciting, a great way to turn this over because we have uh, you know, a dream team here from SBS. And a lot of you often reach out to us and we try to help you with a permit or a license or whatever it may be, and we can help you. And they're like, oh my God, that was amazing. Uh, how did you do that? And uh, very often it's because we actually just reach out to the folks at SBS and they're able to help navigate. And, well, of course, you can't expect them to fix everything and to help with everything all of the time. I know the people individually, and they are really committed to helping small businesses in our city. And if they can't help you directly, trying to connect you. Um, so that's what I have to say. I want to thank everyone for um, for tuning in. Thanks for your support of the Hospitality Alliance. And thanks to the team here at SBS. Uh, so with that said, I want to turn it over to Kitty Chan, who is the Deputy Commissioner of Business Services at the New York City Department of Small Business Services to uh, kick things off. Thank you. Well, thank you, Andrew. And really, thank you to yourself, Brittany, and the rest of the team at the Hospitality Alliance. This isn't about any one person or any one group helping small businesses in New York City. It's all about partnerships. So without this valuable relationship that we have with you and, and all your members, we we wouldn't be able to we wouldn't be where we are. Um, and with that said, I hope one day we will be the goats um, because I feel really pressured now to live up to um, Simone Biles. <laughs> you know, it's each his own in our own world, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, really, thank you so much. It is all about team. And and I, I thank you for ha having my team join your team in helping to help these wonderful people that have joined us today. Um, it's my privilege to uh, share this this program with you today. We put together what we feel are much needed services for your your the hospitality alliance, and we have exactly what Andrew said a dream team here. I'll introduce them individually as they they come up. But just a reminder, all of our services are completely free, and we are not a regulatory agency. Okay, so we're here to be your partners in your journey in entrepreneurship. And with that said, I'd like to start it off by introducing Stephen Picker, who's our Executive Director of the Food and Beverage Industry Partnerships. I hope I got that correct. You've got that perfect, Kitty. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, I, and I and I second and third and fourth all the thanks to all of our partners, um, Andrew, Hospitality Alliance, Brittany. You do amazing work at like just getting the word out. And honestly, that's the secret sauce to all of this. Um, I lead just one of many teams at SBS dedicated to supporting small businesses. I took on this role in 2018 after 30 plus years in New York City restaurant industry. Um, and honestly, when I was doing that work, I knew very little about all the free SBS resources available to business owners and operators. And we hear exactly that from every food and beverage business operator we speak with daily. They're just not aware. So this is why I wanna spend just a few minutes giving you all a little bit of a sneak peek into the work that my team, the food and beverage industry partnership team at Small Business Services engages in for this industry. Um, and then you'll hear from my colleagues at SBS about the amazing work that they do to support businesses as well. Um, um, my one piece of advice today, before I even get into any of it, is really find ways to stay plugged in 
and informed because if you have the information, you can use it, you know what's out there, you're up to date. Um, for people that don't have the networks, um, just find ways online to stay, in, to stay informed. It's easier now than ever before, and we try to make it as easy as possible. So next slide, please, Kitty. Um, the food and beverage industry partnership, important, like who are we, what do we do, and why? So I, I want to take a little time to just sort of talk through our primary areas of focus in our work. Um, first and foremost, we act as conveners. Um, we bring together food and beverage business owners and other industry stakeholders to identify shared priorities and to help develop solutions to problems facing food and beverage businesses in this city. Um, Secondly, we advocate for policy and regulation to support the industry. We really work to represent the voice of New York City business owners throughout all stages of city planning um, and investment that will impact the industry for the long term. Um, we engage in business support and education. We try to act as a front door uh, to SBS and other city agencies for business operators looking for guidance and support. Um, we're able to really quickly refer operators to the right SBS division or to other city agency leads to help streamline processes or solve problems that come up. And we know those are many in your day-to-day -day operations. Um, workforce development. We work to develop strategies and initiatives that help ensure businesses have the trained workers they need to operate and grow. We support learning and development opportunities for food service employees, and we try to help businesses improve their own workplace culture and retention rates. And finally, strategic planning. This is the longer term work. We focus on strengthening the food and beverage industry in ways that will help support long-term growth and sustainability to ensure that this industry that's so vital to this city at large um, remains strong and thriving. Um, next slide, please. So we do direct industry outreach and our industry-focused monthly newsletter uh, amazingly currently reaches over 16,000 New York City food and beverage business owners and operators every month, and the number grows weekly. Um, I'll show this QR code again at the end, but if anyone wants to quickly take a photo of this code on screen, it'll take you to our website, and you'll be able to sign up to receive the newsletter if you don't already to get that in your inbox at the start of every month. Now, I'd like to share a little more detail on some of the more specific programs and initiatives that represent the work that I just described that the Food and Beverage Industry Partnership does on a daily basis. Um, next slide, please. So First Course NYC is a fast track apprenticeship style training delivered in partnership with respected New York City restaurants. Um, it's really an excellent example of a program that we developed that works to achieve two important goals simultaneously. First, we provide low-income New Yorkers with access to quality professional culinary training to help meet the ongoing restaurant industry demand for entry-level cooks. We're also simultaneously working with our restaurant partners in the program to strengthen their onboarding and training processes to be able to drive employee loyalty and higher retention rates in restaurants. Um, if you're on this webinar and you're a restaurant owner interested in potentially becoming a program partner, please reach out and we can discuss that more with you. Next slide, please. Our New York City restaurant hiring, onboarding, and training playbook is something we're really excited about. Um, this, is, this playbook is soon to go live on the city's online My City Business portal. Um, this playbook will incorporate learnings and best practices from over two years of work that we've done through First Course NYC with our restaurant partners and include insights and tips from industry professionals. Um, we really wanted to take all of the learnings from the First Course program and make them available to every New York City food service business. Um, this again will be housed permanently on the city's My City Business Portal. Um, we'll certainly put out word when it goes live, which should be within the next two weeks, we hope. Um, and we hope everyone takes advantage and works with it to improve the strength of your operation in terms of onboarding and training your new hires. Next slide, please. Vocational 
English as a second language training for food service workers. Um, I think as everybody's aware, food service workers with limited English proficiency face challenges in getting promotions and wage increases. Um, we designed this English as a second language training program to deliver English language training that results specifically in graduates being given a promotion or a wage increase by their employer. Um, restaurant partners in this program will directly inform the curriculum so that it is contextualized with a focus specifically on restaurants and other food service work, um, connecting learning with students' daily work experiences, which will uh, incrementally um, speed up the process of learning. Um, this program is expected to launch early next year. And again, we will keep you posted and we will have a sign up form for any restaurant interested in uh, sponsoring any of their employees to take part. Next slide, please. Really primary to the work we do, as I mentioned earlier, is making sure that restaurants have the information they need from the get-go to avoid compliance issues, to avoid violations, to avoid costly fines. Um, we speak with New York City food and beverage business owners daily, and we see firsthand that once their businesses are up and running, they get caught up in the daily grind of running the operation and just don't have the time to continue learning about new ways to strengthen their businesses. So we want to try through this particular restaurant academy to reach operators early in the process to be sure they understand all the information, the tips, the tricks they need to run a profitable business for the long term. Um, we all know that not being fully aware of all the regulatory requirements and operational best practices when starting a new restaurant or other business means precious time and money wasted. So this comprehensive education course will be designed to ensure that early stage operators are aware of everything they need to consider before getting too far down the road. Um, the program will have a core module providing a full overview and then dive more deeply with additional topic specific classes delivered by industry professionals. Uh, curriculum development, we're excited to say for this Restaurant Academy um, is soon to be completed and implementation is planned for the near future. So again, stay tuned. We wanna be sure that you or anyone else you know that's thinking about opening a food service business in New York City um, takes this really important first step. Next slide, please. On behalf of our great partners at the Department of Transportation on this webinar, um, and they will be available momentarily to answer any specific outdoor dining questions you may have, I want to remind everyone of the important upcoming August 3rd deadline. So as you may already know, any food service establishment currently participating in the temporary program must apply to the new Dining Out NYC program by August 3rd to be able to continue to operate your temporary outdoor dining setup. If by that date, August 3rd, an FSE has not submitted a dining out application, they will be told to remove their current temporary dining setup. We obviously would prefer not to see that happen. So we urge everyone on this call, tell everyone you know, if you want to continue using your outdoor setup, um, then please, apply to the program by August 3rd. Next slide, please. Um, some final words, again, your opportunity to scan the QR code to go to our website where you can learn even more about the FMBIP team at SBS. Um, you also, I wanted to make sure to mention here, um, the New York City Restaurant Resource Guide is something that my team developed during the pandemic as a one-stop shop for information. Um, everything pertaining to food service operations. So I urge you all again, as I said earlier, to stay informed. Perfect one-stop shop to do so. Gives you all important latest updates and information on how to stay compliant and make sure you're operating your business in the right way. Um, and last slide, please. So my name again, Stephen Picker. My colleague, Roseanne Martino, is on this call. We are the mighty duo of the Food and Beverage Industry Partnership Team at SBS. Um, you can reach out to either one of us directly or email us at foodandbeverageNYC.com. Um, um, and I want to thank everybody for joining us today on this call. And I will now hand things back to Kitty 
to move the ball forward. Thank you all again. Thank you, Stephen. That was really wonderful. Um, and I really look forward to working with you on a lot of those programs. <clears throat> we are really um, lucky here to, today to have Penny Ringel, who is the Director of Public Engagement for, for uh, Department of Transportation. Uh, he is dining out <laughs> NYC. Um, and I really encourage you all to take advantage of this opportunity. We have a Q&A function um, in, please put your questions in. Unfortunately, Penny is only able to join us until 3.40. So if you have any questions about dining out, please put it in. And what we'll do is actually turn it over to Penny so he can answer your questions. Um, so if anyone's got anything that they really would love to talk about for dining out, please go on in and let's 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 talk to Penny about this because I listen, I learn something new about dining out every time I have this opportunity. So uh, oh, okay, we got one for you. Penny is doing a great job. Oh, shout out for Penny. Um, the you want the slide with the contact information for F and B again? Uh, we can show that, uh, and we can also put it in the chat. Do, do, do. So, Stephen, would you mind just putting that in the it, chat for folks? If you just let me, I just okay. want to add we'll to do. what. Sure what uh, Stephen spoke about the August 3rd deadline. It applies also to anybody that was part of the DCA unenclosed sidewalk cafe program, along with the temporary program of the during COVID. Uh, everybody must apply. If you want to continue operating what you currently have set up until your application is approved, please submit your application by August 3rd. August 3rd is this Saturday. There is no extensions. There's no commissioner waivers. There's no way this is part of the legislation. So there's really nothing we can do if the application is not submitted by August 3rd. Uh, you can go to our website, diningoutnyc.info. Uh, you can go to that website. You have all the, there's a page of rules and requirements with setup guides. That you can see everything. And then there's a page of how to apply and it guides you how to apply for the program. So please take advantage of it. Don't wait for the last minute. Thank you so much. I'll and... put out our email address just in case if okay. anybody, our email right. address is diningoutnyc at dot.nyc.gov. Again, diningoutnyc, one word, diningoutnyc at dot.nyc.gov. Thank you so much. Thank you. A uh, quick question for you. Uh, my soon to be bakery, Cora is about to open this upcoming winter, God willing, should I still apply now? So if you're a new bakery, uh, you do not have to apply now. You could apply whenever you're ready. Once you have your FSCP from the health department, you could apply because the deadline is only for those that are current, that currently have outdoor dining on the sidewalk or the roadway. Uh, the application portal continues being open after August 3rd. It's 24 seven. You can always apply whenever you're ready. Hope that answers your question, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. And please let us know about your opening. I look forward to uh, going and visiting you. I love all bakeries. Um, so please invite us. I'm going to now share my screen. Can you see it full screen or is it just like part of my screen? It's not idea. full screen. It's not full screen. Full screen. Hold on. Click on from beginning at the top. Yeah. Is that any better? No. 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 Okay. Hold on. As you can tell, I am not the technical one here. I'm going to tell you this sad but true story. When I lived in Japan for a number of years, and when I came back, I I thought it was Wi-Fi. I was like, what's this Wi-Fi thing everyone keeps talking about? Um, can you see it now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, so it's I'm I'm gonna just share with you some of our um services, uh, uh of some of our business services here at SBS. Uh doo -doo -doo. um so first of all, um this was born out of the pandemic where we started a small business hotline. Um, since we we started, we've received over we've received almost two hundred thousand calls over the hotline, and what it is has been 
that we are the gateway. We this is one of the entry points that you can come in and and join and be connected to our services. And we have a really wonderful jingle. So if you go to YouTube and look for SBS jingle, you'll see it. SBS for NYC. I my my team is smiling because I didn't think I'd actually do that. Um, but we have our small business hotline. They're there. They're ready to help you and, and direct you to the services that are available here at SBS. We also manage the business solution centers as well as the industrial business service provider, the IBSPs, throughout New York City. And here again is another gateway where, where businesses can come in and really sort of get um, that hands-on, one-on-one assistance that they need. Um, you know, a lot of folks will come in and, and think that this is this is what I need. But sometimes you actually really need that moment where you're talking to someone and, and talking it through and, and just trying to find out what what really are the next steps. And so we have really wonderful account managers at each of our centers that are able to assist you. One of the great things that they're able to assist you with is capital access and capital. We have... Um, we work with uh, 40 lenders throughout the city. Uh, we are actually really proud to have actually developed the New York City Funds Finder. I don't know if you've heard about this, but about three or four years ago, the White House had announced a plan to make sure that businesses were aware of the financing products that are out there, that people would, would have the vehicle to be able to do their own research, right? And so New York being the leading capital of everything, we helped to develop the first prototype, which will actually be throughout other cities in the US. And what this enables a small business to do is actually go in and put in their own information and learn about every product that's out there, what interest rates are there, and, and really be able to do their own homework before they come in and talk to somebody. And why is this valuable? Because, you know, when you're, when you're taking out a loan, this is, it's a big step. And one of the most important things is that you know that you're educated, that you're empowered to make that decision. Um, if you still would like, if you'd like to proceed on your own, you're more than welcome. This will connect you to one of the lenders, but you can also connect to one of our account managers through our business solution centers who will actually be able to then walk you through it. A lot of the time we hear things from businesses such as, I need to borrow $200,000, right? But that's not necessarily the case. And really one, one of the most important things to know is, is your, yourself your business, your cash flow, what can you take on at that point? And so our account managers will work with you to really figure out what is really realistic. Most of the time, it's not the big loan that you think, um, but what's sustainable for your company is possibly something smaller. So, or it, it's possible you need to do some credit counseling or, you know, they might recommend some, from some financial literacy classes for you, which we also provide. So I really think that it's important to come in and meet some of our account managers, get the business consultation and make that connection, okay? Um, one of the other programs that we have is a commercial lease assistance program. This is pro bono. Um, the only thing we don't do is uh, litigation, right? But if you're having difficulty understanding the lease, which is understandable, I barely understood mine when I said my, my home lease, right? Um, but it's so important. And what you're going to do is you can get assigned to a lawyer who will actually walk you through it and 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 be able to help you with getting getting uh, understanding your lease, but also help you negotiate with your landlord. OK. Um, and also, if you're having difficulties, if, if you if you need to renegotiate your lease or you're thinking about signing a renewal, it's important for you to understand what your rights are and what what is actually spelled out in that lease. And that's what where our lawyers come in. We also provide other pro bono uh, legal services such as entity formation, information about trademark or AI or a lot of things. Um, and that, the business solution centers will help connect you to that those programs as well. I, I love our business solution centers because not only will they connect you to their services, but we also provide education services. I shouldn't have flipped the slide, but I did. But um, our business solution centers do a lot of what we call one-off classes throughout the year. Um, so they'll do things like QuickBook or search engine optimization or marketing or branding. And these are really good opportunities to brush up on some skills, but also be able to ask an expert on, on some of the topics that are really important to you and also make connections with other businesses. Um, 
aside from the, the, that set of education courses that uh, we have, we also have some programs with uh, more additional um, resources. So our We NYC for Women Entrepreneurs is really sort of connecting um, female entrepreneurs together through not only business education, but networking, mentoring, coaching, any of the services that you may need as a, as a woman entrepreneur. One of the really great things about this program is that it is really about working together and talking to each other. And so I really strongly recommend, even if you're not interested in this one, we also have dun, 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 our fast track program. So our fast track program is split up in two, two sections. Uh, one is new venture for starting out and they will take you from idea to pitch, right? And then there's growth and it's, it's you're in your business and you're trying to figure out how to, how to grow it, how to optimize what you're doing. And this is the really great opportunity. Like I said, networking is so important. And so we actually split up the cohorts. So there's different things like there could be a fast track for women or for veterans or for plus 50 or tech. And so we try to um, create a, a support group where people can work together and, and really talk to each other about the problems they may all be facing. Okay. Um, one of the other great programs we have is our workers uh, co-op um, program. Um, and you're thinking, what workers co-op, what, you know, and stuff. And when you think about it, it really is awesome for succession planning, right? Sometimes you're, you're running a business and it's a really great business and maybe you want to retire, but you don't have someone to take it over. And perhaps your, your employees would be interested in taking over the business. So we work with, we work with um, businesses throughout the city. We've actually helped open over 300 workers co-ops in the 10 years that this program has been in existence. And we really work with individuals and existing businesses to form workers co-ops. We provide technical education and technical assistance. And so if you'd like to learn more, please let us know. And I believe, oh, our B prep program. So Resiliency is so important, especially any of those of you who are in the flood pl pl flood zone areas. Um, we have a really great program. If you look on our website, which will include everything for you in the chat, and we'll actually send you these decks. Um, B prep is about making sure that your business is resilient. Um, I can't tell you, you know, even after Ida, even after the flooding that happened a couple of months ago, especially hard hit in Brooklyn how important it is to know your, your business's vulnerabilities. So we currently have got a grant program for uh, businesses in these weather prone areas. Uh, and what it is is that we will give you an on-site assessment. Um, if, you, if you follow what we ask for, it is a reimbursement grant up to $5,000. Um, a lot of it is about equipment, whether it's pallets or HVAC or, or even a generator. Um, we give you a list of the things that we recommend for your business to become more resilient. And we also have our ERU unit. Um, so when I first started here almost three years ago, Ida happened, you know, and that was just a real learning experience. And our ERU unit deployed with a lot of our staff that's actually on this call now out in, out in the field to talk to businesses, to let them know about what was out there available. Um, and really sort of help connect businesses to not, um, not only each other, but the bids and associations, and more importantly, their insurance companies. So our ERU unit has been out there, not only just emergencies, but also for such things as, um, you know, if there's a fire or, or uh, too much snow that um, closes down a street. Um, so we're there to help you. Um, I really am quite proud of all my services, but the one I am most proud of um, and she knows it, um, is um, we have a really great program called NYC Best, right? And I'm so, and New York City Express Services team. And the reason why I'm so proud of this, and they're like, okay, is really, uh, honestly, what happened was a couple of, a couple of years ago, right? Um, our general counsel was walking in the streets of, uh, down by the seaport, right? And he, he had, um, he ran into one of those kiosks that that uh, sell food, and they were closing up. This true story. They were closing up, and he said, "Why are you closing up?" And he said, "Oh, I just got inspected, and DOH, Shimh closed me down." Well, 
I think everyone on this call knows they close you down. You were dirty. You were dirty, dirty people, right? Well, he gets the guy's card and he gives it to me on Monday and he says, can you have your team reach out to him? Not only did we send our NYC best team out there, the guy not only passed inspection when he re-inspection, but he actually got an A on the next time. And I'm so proud of that because it, it shows us making a big difference. So I am really proud of this team. Um, I, I'm not supposed to say that, but I'm saying it. And um, so I'm really proud to turn it over now to Berth Ambrose, who is our executive director of the NYC Best Team, and who's going to share her slides with you as soon as I figure out how to do this. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kitty. Hi, everyone. Good job, Kitty. Uh, thank you, everyone, for having us today. Thank you, Hospitality Alliance, all my partners at SBS. As Kitty said, we are NYC Best, the Business Express service team. We truly believe time is money and save both with NYC Best. One-on-one uh, -on -one help for free, as in all our programs. Next slide, please. Uh, as you can see, we're here at SBS. Next slide, please. Uh, so through SPS, as I always like to say, we're the little agency that most people don't hear about. We go out there and we provide free services to help small businesses, whether it is business support, worker support, MWB support. But here at NYC Best, we are one team that provides two services to help owners save time and money. Uh, I was looking through the chat and through the uh, participants. I recognize a lot of your numbers and I think a lot of you guys know us by different names, small business advocates, compliance advisors. But around September 7, 2022, we became one team because we truly believe with this team and with this partnership, we can help you guys open better, launch your businesses and operate safely. We truly believe that with education and advocacy, we can help you navigate this wild world of city government to help you run your business more smoothly and educate you on the rules, regulations, license, and permits. So we're two parts of the same coin. The small business advocates are the ones that usually hold your hand, help you navigate on what license and permits to apply for, especially when you're just starting out, you just signed the lease, you hear all these stories. We try to give you comfort, give you guidance. The more time you spent with us, the less time you're spending researching and you know rooting all over the place. We could help you open faster and navigate through all the ins and outs of city government. And then we have our compliance advisors. Our compliance advisors were all former inspectors, whether they work for health department, fire department, DCWP, DEP. We get cross-strained through the various city agencies, and we actually go out to your place. Once you've signed the lease, you go out. You could be in business for 20 years. You could have signed the lease yesterday. We go out, we hold your hand, and we help educate you on the different rules and regulations that you may come across while you're operating in New York City, whether it's the health department, the fire department, wherever it may be, we provide that guidance. We are not enforcement agency, as Kitty said. We just give you the education and guidance to help prepare you for the inspection or to just help you stay in the know every year. Because as you know, every year new rules, new regulations come out. And you know, the more you know, the better you do. We truly believe that people don't want to do bad on their inspections. It's just sometimes you just don't know. And with this partnership and with the education that we provide, you could do even better. And we provide our services in multiple languages, English, Spanish, Korean, Chinese, Mandarin, and Fujianese, Russian, and Haitian Creole. Next slide, please. And this is the glimpse of the agencies that we work with. You know, we'll be nowhere without our partner city agencies. We get, you know, we're proud to announce that we have two new members that started this month and last month. So through these new members and the trainings that they're going to gain for the next couple of months, the team is really strengthening the knowledge that they know. We're taking all our trainings over again this summer so that we're ready to serve you, whether it's the fire department, whether it's our sister state agencies through agriculture and markets and the licensing centers. We try our best to reach out to as multiple city agencies as we can to keep those partnerships, because how can we reach out on your behalf if we're not always staying in touch with everyone? Next slide, please. And mostly we focus on brick and mortar businesses, but you know, if you are in a brick and mortar business and you just have a question, free free to reach out to us. We're always 
trying our best to navigate, to adapt to the type of businesses that are opening in New York City. One thing I will always commend about New Yorkers, every day we hear either from the hotline, from our email, a new type of business that people are thinking about. If you know we know the answer, we'll try our best to answer and help you navigate and gain the solutions that you need. If we don't know the answer, we'll reach out to our partner agencies to help you navigate and you know, get the best answer that you could get. We can never make promises that the answers that the city agencies or that we have may be the answer you want to hear. But as long as you know the answer, you know how to pivot and how to uh, launch as best as you can. So whether you're in food service, retail, personal care businesses, and, you know, the more types of businesses that reach out to us, the more we can advocate, advocate for more training and prepare for the questions that you guys may have for us in the future. Next slide, please. So here is an example of how we work. You know, maybe you opened up your business, you're working with a general contractor, they applied for a DOB permit, and they said, oh man, you know, it's gonna take two months, and you know, you just signed the lease four months ago, that's more time and more money that you're losing by not staying open. You know, sometimes the general contractor may be over-exaggerating on when they put in the permits, we could always reach out to DOB and see when it was put in, if there's anything that can happen, for your health department permits, you know, once you do that construction and you put that hand on stick where you put it, you know, it's really hard to change it afterwards. You know, call us before, before construction even starts so we can help you put things in the right place so you don't have to change them later. And, you know, I think the star of the show right now for August 3rd is DOT. We're all working together to get the information out there. You know, um, one advice I would give you, Follow them on Twitter, follow them on Instagram. They've done a lot of work. I was watching it yesterday. We were talking about it in the office today. August 3rd is a very serious date. It's a Saturday, so come Monday. You know, if you don't do what you have to do, you you know, the city has been trying their best to spread the news. So please try your best to apply as soon as possible. Next slide, please. And there's the compliance advisors. So the compliance advisors go out there, they go directly to your business, whether you're at the bottom of Staten Island or the top of the Bronx or far close to Queens, Long Island. We will go out there to your business, walk you through, provide you that guidance. We also provide checklists where we answer your questions. And you know, for anyone you talk to on the team, this is a relationship that we hope to build with you. To call us whenever you need, whenever you have a question, never too big, never too small to guide you through this. Next slide, please. Uh, and we're proud to say, since we relaunched in September, we are, we are, we have saved over five, we've saved over 5,000 billion businesses, uh, $36 million. Next slide, please. Yeah, and then we have our newsletter. So, uh, my colleague, Tanisha, will put it in the chat. Next slide, please. And we have NYC Breast in your community where we're doing more outreach to go out there and answer the question directly with community-based organizations and us go out there to answer your questions and to give you the regulatory resources you need. Next slide, please. And in the fall, we'll be launching, relaunching our NYC Best Bootcamp, where is a nine module course to educate businesses to another way for you guys to gain the resources you need from the city agencies. It's us and the city agencies that partner together to uh, give you this course. More education you have, the better you'll do. Next slide, please. And then I'm gonna touch on some common violations. Most of you guys are food service. So I hope everyone has signed up for their food protection course, You know, educating your workers. You can't be there all the time. The more they know, the better you'll do on your inspection. Next slide, please. And while we're all focusing on dining out, I hope you all remember that the commercial waste zone starts in September for Central Queens. If you guys have more questions, please reach out to us. Next slide, please. And yeah, and last but not least, this is how you reach us. We'll also put our emails in the chat, but if you just want to call us anonymously for any of the services that Kitty said about SBS or the hotline, here's the number on the screen. And you could always email us at nycbest at sbs.nyc.gov. Yeah, thank you. And we hope to hear from you soon.
Thank you, Berth. Really appreciate it. And I know that this is a lot for us to share with all of you, but just know that we're here for you and we're, we are sh uh, sharing uh, all this information. I believe we're being recorded too. Um, so with that said, it is my pleasure to turn it over to <clears throat> um, Ophelia Gabrino, who's Executive Director of Capacity Building and Corporate Partnerships, who's gonna talk about our MWB program. Am I sharing screen? No, not yet, okay. Take it away. Ophelia. Thanks, Kitty. Thanks, everybody, for having us. Um, I'm going to quickly go through these slides because I know we want to leave some time for Q&A. Uh, I'm going to just give you kind of the, the why and what and um, the how is all in the slides that will be provided to you and you can look at uh, at your convenience. So MWBE stands for Minority and or Women Business Enterprise. Um, so if uh, this may or may not apply to everybody, um, but we currently uh, certify for the city of New York, uh, businesses that want to do business with the city agencies or mayoral offices. Uh, and if you are um, minority owned, 51% uh, or more majority owned, um, you operate and control your business and you happen to be um, of the ethnicity that we currently certify for, which is Black, Hispanic, Asian Pacific, Asian Indian, Native American, um, and women of all ethnicities. You would be uh, potentially able eligible to certify as an MWBE for the city. And why would you want to certify? Well, if you're interested in selling to the city of New York and its many agencies that buy almost everything under the sun, um, but as a food service enterprise, um, you would um, potentially be selling catering services, uh, goods, um, food services um, to some of the agencies that buy those particular types of services and goods, then uh, this gives you a little bit of a leg up because the city has goals to sell to minority and women-owned businesses. Um, currently, we're, our goal, our target goal is 30%. MWBE utilization on all city contracts. So that means goals are set be, you know, below that and above that. Um, but our goal is to um, give as much uh, of our procurement spend um, to MWBEs. Uh, the mayor actually uh, voiced his commitment to award $25 billion um, by the end of fiscal year 2025. So that's the end, next June, end of the next June and 60 billion by FY 2030 um, to MWBE. So it does give you a little bit of an advantage. In fact, there's an actual procurement specifically for certified MWBE. So it narrows your competition um, in terms of getting those uh, contract awards. So uh, next slide. Um, the other benefits um, are pictured here, um, but basically it is about selling to the city of New York. We also have support services um, that uh, you can access as a cer city certified MWBE. Um, and that includes uh, things that I will talk about in a few slides. So I'm not gonna go into very much detail, um, but a lot of benefits to being able to sell to the city of New York in a certified uh, capacity. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, in general, you would be registering uh, your business to sell to the city, uh, become a New York City vendor through the payee information portal. Uh, and then uh, you would create a passport account, which kind of identifies your business to the buyers uh, from the city agencies. Next slide, please. And then um, what you'll end up doing is a f uh, completing an application online through our SBS Connect portal. Um, and it is, uh, you know, walks you through the steps. You'll create an account online uh, and then go through an application. Um, you also have the ability to fast track an application if you are already certified with one of our partners, uh, which is New York State, um, Port Authority of New York, New Jersey, um, the New York City School Construction Authority, and the National Minority Supplier Development Council. So if you've already certified with them, uh, we can fast track and move you quickly through our certification. Uh, next slide, please. So if you do need help with applying, um, 
and um, you want to investigate this further, you can actually make an appointment with certification specialists at our business solutions centers all throughout the city. And we also have MWBE Leadership Association members who are funded by the city council to help you with certification as well. And I've listed those organizations and the contacts at those organizations here on this slide. Um, but the main uh, website that I've noted here is nyc.gov forward slash get certified. And you can review that and understand to understand all of the eligibility criteria, um, as well as um, the steps to uh, submit an application. Um, there's documentation that you'll need to put together. So it does help to get assistance prior to submitting an application. Uh, next slide, please. So once you're certified, um, we have a lot of free services available to help you because we're not going to let you get certified and then you don't know what to do. Um, so we've got our MWBE vendor services team uh, that can help you with what we call technical assistance um, in understanding the city government procurement process and uh, helping you navigate how to, how to market your business to them, um, how to deal with all of the various procurements that are out there and understand them. Um, they provide all of these services um, in addition uh, to help you kind of set yourself up to do business with the city. Um, and hopefully um, uh, you'll be able to understand better once you take advantage of these services as to how to go forward with bidding on um, solicitations and hopefully winning contracts and managing those contracts once you win them. Uh, next slide. That same team is also federally funded to be an Apex Accelerator, uh, which is a unit that helps uh, any small business, not just certified firms, um, navigate city, state, and federal government opportunities. So you can, if you're interested in selling to any government entity, Apex Accelerator services, um, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Long Island, uh, and the Bronx. So they can help you with uh, selling to New York City, New York State, and the federal government. And there's a lot of opportunities available for every small business out there. Um, and they'll provide you with these services through that team. Next slide, please. Um, and in addition to their one-on-one -on -one services, they provide webinars. And I swear, it's like two or three a week. Um, and it covers all the various um, selling to government topics that you would imagine. So. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's like identifying agencies that might um, buy what you sell, uh, understanding the procurement process, how you market your company to these agencies, um, how to manage your contracts if you are fortunate to win, and then uh, additional series on federal contracting. Uh, links to access these uh, are throughout these slides, so you don't have to worry about like writing anything down. Um, so we have the link here to access the Apex Accelerator webinar series. Next slide, please. Uh, and I've uh, included contact information. Um, once you're certified and you want to take advantage of the MWBE vendor services, um, or, or if you are a small business just looking to sell to any type of government, you can go through the Apex Accelerator team. Next slide, please. And once you've availed yourself of technical assistance services, my team uh, is involved in MWBE capacity building programs and services. And these are programs designed to really help business owners uh, kind of strengthen their operations um, in order to successfully pursue contracting with the city, with government in general, um, and also to develop uh, some mentoring networks. Um, we have programming designed to assist you build your networks um, and learn from already successful MWBEs um, who, have, who have gotten certified, who've started contracting with the government and have been very successful to the tunes of millions of dollars. Next slide, please. So these are the four kind of programs that I oversee with my team of program managers. Two of these are for construction firms, so bond readiness and bonding services and the construction ramp up program for construction firms. And the um, other two are for any um, certified firm. Uh, and I'll go through those very quickly on the next slide, please. Uh, Mentors is really a series of uh, events that we put together with a roster of MWBE mentors that we've asked to serve as mentors. We um, curate, um, 
topics for panel discussion and then break out into rooms so that MWBE is interested in pursuing contracting can meet directly with these mentors and ask their questions. Um, uh, the contract legal services um, are webinars and legal consultation clinics that we offer our certified firms. Um, generally, the webinars are kind of open to everybody and it provides a lot of information on legal related topics for your business. So we always say if you get the more information that you have, the more armed you are to deal with situations. So we uh, cover a lot of topics um, related to uh, contracts, knowing what to, uh, to look for before you sign agreements, lease agreements, prime subcontractor agreements, and then um, certainly business structure uh, topics and, uh, and employment topics as well. Um, and then we have a 30 minute consultation sessions with attorneys pro bono. So all, again, all of these services are free. Um, you can meet with an attorney with, um, if you've got a legal uh, business related topic or if you want them to review a contract before you sign it, um, you can avail yourself of these clinics. And we offer these on an ongoing basis. And next slide, please. Um, you can access um, all of our services through the various links that I've included on these slides. And also, if you have questions, you can email our uh, various units uh, related to the topics that I've covered, certification, um, and the MWBE vendor services once you're certified, Apex Accelerator, if you're interested in selling to the um, any of the city, uh, state, or federal government entities, and you do not have to be MWBE certified to do so. Um, but they will talk about, you know, what certifications you can um, avail yourself of to do business with that government entity. Okay, I think that's my last slide. Um, if you have any questions on that, you can always reach out to me um, once they share the slides and I can pop my contact information in the chat as well. Thank you very much, Ophelia. And I just want to say, um, you know, it really is really important for you to register. Um, Last year, someone asked me to find a, uh, a restaurant that sells uh, one of the agencies who wanted to have a uh, churro, I'm probably <laughs> saying it wrong, cart at one of their yep. parties, and we had to look at the MWB directory for them. So please, it is really well worth it. Last but not least, um, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but in our SPS logo, we assist careers, businesses, and neighborhoods. And a lot of folks don't know about our workforce uh, development Center, and I'm really pleased to uh, introduce Yuri Halak, who is our Deputy Commissioner for Workforce Development, who will be talking about some of the services that they provide. And so, Yuri, I'm actually going to turn it over to you. Great. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I'm, my name is um, Yuri Pollock, and I um, have the great pleasure of leading our workforce development team here. It's um, great to see everyone. Um, we're especially grateful for partnerships um, with our um, hospitality industry partnerships with all with partners with all of you. Um, just wanted to, before I actually briefly talk about this, I just wanted to give you a brief um, overview of our Workforce One system. Um, I have the great pleasure of overseeing um, a system of 18 career centers um, across New York City. Uh, we're actually um, the largest federally funded um, local workforce development system in the country. Um, of the 18 centers, we have one main hub center in each borough, um, and that provides the most services. It provides things like um, you know, resume writing help, interview coaching, one-on-one -on -one career counseling, um, and of course, access to thousands of jobs. There are usually five to 7,000 jobs at any given time. Um, there are also centers specifically that you know, focus on the industrial transportation and manufacturing centers. There are five of those. We have, um, it doesn't concern this particular audience as much, but we have a healthcare career center. Um, we also have um, center, a center in the Bronx that focuses on youth employment and a center in Washington Heights that focuses on helping um, recent immigrants, although all of our centers, all 18 of them, um, have been especially focused on connecting New Yorkers, our asylum seekers and migrants to jobs. Um, and we're grateful for your, for your partnership. And um, many of you joined um, and we had the great pleasure of partnering with Andrew on a job fair um, at our Upper Manhattan Center um, I believe it was back in the spring, back in April or March, um, that was specifically targeted at the hospitality sector. 
um, that was very, very successful, and we're grateful for your partnership. I wanted to emphasize um, that we at Workforce One, um, with our Workforce One Career Centers, uh, we're at your service. Um, we could uh, literally, I'm actually coming to you from a job fair in the Bronx at our Bronx Hub Center that just finished, um, where we saw over 300 job seekers today. And we can literally do everything but extend the job offer to your, to your um, um, if for your job openings that you might have. Um, we can do targeted hiring events. Um, we can interview people. We can pre-screen people. Um, you know, we can um, host many job fairs. Um, and if and if there are several employers in the hospitality industry, I'm sure Andrew would love to partner with us again um, on another hospitality job fair, or you know, two or three. And you know, Stephen's support was invaluable um, in that event as well. Um, so um, just wanted to, um, I will put my email in the chat um, of any hiring needs that you might have. Um, we would love to support you with those. Um, my team um, at SBS at One Liberty Plaza is at your service. Um, we would love to connect with you and talk with you more um, about um, how we can help get the right talent, source the right talent. Um, you know, we, we worked with uh, close to 100,000 job seekers last year. Um, so it's um, really a steady pool of talent um, and we're able to, you know, really match whatever hiring needs you might have um, with our talent pool. Um, also wanted to talk with you about um, another great program that we have in addition to um, our recruitment services. Um, and this is the slide that's on your screen. Um, it's called Customized Training. Um, really, it's a way that um, if you're a for-profit business, which I'm assuming most, if not all, of, um, of um, our of you um, in the hospitality industry on this call are, um, we're able to subsidize a lot of the cost of training that you offer staff. Um, so we have grants available that are between 30,000 and 400,000. So that's the ceiling and the floor. Um, if you're able to train at least 20 employees um, and if um, at least some of them, at least the majority of them are existing employees, although we can talk about that. There is some flexibility around that rule. Um, so what happens is, is you can be reimbursed up to 60% of the costs of training that you offer staff um, provided that um, there's a wage increase that comes with your offering that training to your staff. You know, there, there, there are certain requirements about that, but they're not overly onerous. Um, it's not a huge inc wage increase, but it has to be a wage increase nonetheless. Um, and there are any number of trainings you can apply for this grant for. Um, it could be teaching your staff on point of sale. It could be uh, teaching them how to use recently purchased equipment or software, um, how to offer new products or services, um, it, it you know could be how to use certain technology. It could be related to customer service. Um, so all of those things, um, like I said, we could pay for up to sixty percent of the cost. Um, you know, as long as you're a for-profit business, um, at least ten employees, and and there's a wage increase. Um, the way to gain more information about that, um, the the uh, director of the of the program, um, um, Orieta Laska, um, her um, address and contact information is on the slide but you should also feel free to contact me. Again, I'll put my name and my email address in the chat. Um, and, you know, there's a simple pre-application form that you can fill out. Um, we have a dedicated team of staff and our customized training team that will literally explain the program to you, answer any questions, help you fill out the application and bring you through the process. Um, and this is a program that quite frankly, I'm really, really excited to talk about. Um, since it's currently undersubscribed. Um, we could definitely use more businesses to participate. There's funding available and it's a really, really excellent program. So in conclusion, uh, we're so fortunate to have you as partners. Um, we've enjoyed working with you historically. Um, the hospitality industry is very well represented um, in the terms in terms of the um, jobs that our career centers source. Um, we'd like to continue to partner with you to source talent for you. Um, and we'd love to for you to participate in our customized training program if it meets your needs. Um, so thank you, Kitty. Thank you, colleagues, for giving me a chance to speak with you today. Um, and we welcome any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, Yuri. And I just want to say sorry we went a little over time, but, you know, it was really well worth it. Um, we have the dream team here. And all I got to say is gold. And I really hope that you enjoyed this. We will be sharing the recording with you as well as our decks and our contact information. We know it was a lot, right? And so what I encourage you to do is actually reach out to us and, and let us know. We have a question. 
so if I was getting ready to open a business, I hired lower skilled. This is for you, program give now more skilled. Uh, so Yuri, please type in your answer and then actually include your email address in there so everyone can see your email address. Um, please feel free to reach out. Oh, oops, I um I did the wrong thing. So um I It's okay, I, you can go back, click on the answered and you're gonna see it there. And I, oh, think, got I believe it. you but, should be able to type an answer. Okay. But the answer the answer is yes. Um we, we can absolutely help you. Um that would that would qualify. Um so yep, if if um if you are upstilling them, if there's a training that the cost of it can be can be quantified, if it's provided by an outside vendor that you know bills you. Um, or if there's software that you're purchasing, things like that. Um, and as long as there's a wage increase, um, which we can go into more of the requirements about that separately, we would absolutely be able to support that. Um, so I'm I'm very, very excited about that. And let me see. Oh, wonderful. And, you know, Kitty already beat me to the punch and put my um, email in the chat. So we would love to hear from you. So you should have all of our emails in the chat um, and the Q&A section. Thank you so much. We look forward to hearing from you. I'd like to actually turn it back over to Brittany. Hi there. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, you know, as Kitty mentioned, as everyone here mentioned, we're here to support you and your businesses. And we thank you for the support. And for the SBS team, thank you all so much for doing this amazing presentation. So much information, so valuable for businesses. So I thank you. I look forward to continue working with you all and enjoy the rest of your day and uh, go USA. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Bye.